The Chum Tadawar here, and today we've got a Saving Your Disaster situation playing as the Cult of Pleasure going up against Hexawaddle. So, the situation as it's presented to us right now, if we hit end turn, uh, this army is going to stand behind us, and Mazda Mundi is going to bypass Sildrator's zone of control for the most part, and go straight and attack us here. So the theme of this video here is really understanding how zone of control works, because a lot of people, I think, are really quite unsure about it. It can be very finicky sometimes and get kind of complicated, but there's rules associated with zones of controls and things that you can and can't do. The AI and the player have the exact same rules when it comes to it. Sometimes the, the AI gets cheats in regard to other game mechanics, but when it comes to zone of control, it's both the same. So things to understand of this. The zone of control that is closest to the enemy is the one that they um, have to deal with. Now, if they are, they can, of course, attack the, the uh, main thing that's causing the, the zone of control. So in the case of Master Mundi here, that's Sildrator. So he can attack Sildrator, he can besiege it, or he can launch the attack on it. But he can also attack anything that is within the zone of control of Sildrator. So for example, if I took this army and moved it over to here, Mazda Mundi can no longer attack it. So in this sort of situation here, if you wanted to prevent him from attacking you, you want to stand outside uh, the zone of control of Sildrator, that would force him to besiege the settlement and uh, not be able to attack it because, yeah, he can only attack what's, what's in here. Um, so let's end the turn here. I'm just going to show you what's going to happen because it's on very hard campaign, very hard battle difficulty, so I'll be able to load. And I'll show you a trick that we can do to prevent Mazda Mundi from utilizing his other army as reinforcements. Oh, hang on. So you can see he just walked right past Sildrator. As long as he's making an attack within Sildrator's zone of control, he can attack anything he wants within there. And the thing is, if we withdrew from here, um, which I'll show you if we do that, what he could do is besiege Sildrator and then withdraw. Because he's on the north side of it, he would actually come up from the other side. But they decided that this is strong enough to be able to beat us. Now, this is not what we're going to do in this situation. We might be able to win that battle there, but it probably wouldn't be a good engagement. So, I'm going to show you a little trick. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. No trick works 100% of the time, usually. It's always, it always comes down to, you know, situation. And a lot of time people will see me do a technique and then apply it in the wrong situation and be like, oh, that technique sucks. You've got to know when to do it. Okay. So, like I said before, Sildrator is the main zone of control that's, uh, that's dictating Master Mundi's attack. So we, what we want to do is change that zone of control. So what I'm going to do here is recruit another Lord. This isn't always an option because, you know, 15% extra supply line penalty, but it is an option right here. So I'm going to recruit a Beast Wizard because I want Flock of Doom. Because um, they're rank 8, so I'm not going to be able to get like the tier 2 level spells, just the tier 1 stuff. So I'll go with Tuff, because this one might die. Now, currently, because this one here is standing Supreme behind Sildrator, Sildrator is still the main um, uh, zone of control. But, if yes. I move her in front of it, okay, now Mazda Mundi, did you see how his movement changed? See how we can no longer move beyond here? That's because that's her Spooky zone of control. Sorceress. If I move her back here again, see how his movement has changed? His movement range includes to here Dark power. and see how it's changed again because the, he can't bypass two zones of control he can only bypass one essentially when making an attack now what we could do is we can still have this unit reinforced as long as it's standing next to zone of control doesn't have to stay within it like this so master mundi yeah, now has another target to attack. He might still be able to attack this one here because it's right at the edge. Um, but he would get completely stuck because of this other one here. But another what thing is, is because um, this one here, uh, it's too far away from both of them. They can't reinforce each other in this situation here. So what we want to do is... It's got to be basically perfect in order to make it work, right? Um, let's go with this and... With magic resistance, just in case we miscast. 
Because I usually, sometimes I overcast um, Flock of Doom just to get a bit of extra range. Now, Master Mundi's army just on its own is going to be fairly, fairly tough. But the main thing that we try to do here is prevent them from reinforcing. Okay, now let's uh, see how this goes. Uh, this one's Dreadlord of the Druki. coming under attack. Um, don't worry about that. Let's just deal with this. So the reason I put it on a horse as well, because I want it to be able to move around quickly. And then Mazda Mundi couldn't access the other guy's reinforcements and has made the attack just by himself. So we've increased our strength ranking by one lord and we've reduced his strength ranking by an entire army. Alright, um, makes sense not to, well, to control large army. Okay, let's do this. Now the biggest problem is going to be the scramble to get organized. Because, you know, they're, they're just going to rush at us. And plus they've got that uh, summon. That could be a bit of a problem. So what I want to do right off the bat is get in reasonably close while these guys are getting on the battlefield. And just get a flock of doom down early. Good, didn't miscast. What's our chance of that? 35%. Okay. Dark Riders! Dark Shards! Druki! 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 Organize as best I can. Dark Riders! Bolt Throwers! Yeah, you guys stay about. Moving out! On to slaughter! Hang on. Oh, it's in locked formation. The summer's gonna come down in a moment. How are we going over here? Yeah, we got we got a bit of time before they show up. Uh, don't do that. We are ready. Dark shards. Okay, yeah, the summon, that's fine. It's gonna go. Alright, everybody just don't fire it will just yet. It's broken. We gotta get organized. An army like this needs a good solid formation. It's really important. We are ready. Death awaits. Okay, keep the fire wizards back here. Keep the death hags up front here. Dark riders. Okay, you can go fire at will now. Bolts throwers. Dark elves. Onward. Understood. Dark shards. Onwards to murder. Okay. Hopefully that's reasonably organized. Alright, let's go and chuck another one down there. So yeah, bounce power's about even. It is on very hard battle difficulty. Yep. And how much damage did you do? 6,000 from that. It's not too bad. Not too bad. You got a bit of magic. Alright. Also, the longer they take to get over here, the better. Good. them sitting over there. Also, what we're going to do is try to lure their forces over here early, so that we can shoot the crap out of them. Nagarothi, on to slaughter. Onward, murder awaits. Corsairs. Death hand. I march, reveling in pain. That's it. Inflicting pain. Yep, if we can get these ones over here early, that's good. Bounce power's looking decent. Uh, it's definitely not worth it to chuck her in there and pop down the dark conduit, or else you end up getting killed. Alright, that's fine, they can handle that. Death is coming. Good, Ripperdactyl's gone there. And incoming Razordons. Cool, cool, cool. Can handle that. So she got no kills, but she's done 20,000 damage worth. Okay, that's two of the summons dealt with now. She's pretty badly damaged now. Death hag. We understand. Bolt throwers. We are ready. He's a better anti-infantry than they are anti-large. Get our dark conduit ready just if needed. 
Best used against uh, used with the hero. Uh, not yet. They're just getting shredded. They're, wow, they're really keeping these ones hanging back. All right, I think Dark Conduit there would be best. Get rid of these horned ones. Good. Make sure the garrison is the primary one to take damage, not the main army. So good. Bounce power's looking good. Uh, could aim for Master Mundi. Keep the cavalry hanging back. Dude. Let the garrison be the one taking the damage. It's all good. Yep, that's, that's fine if he wants to use that. Alright, let's go anti large and uh, shoot Master Mundi. So far, no casualties on the main army. Okay, the other summons there. All right, cool. So now we'll get the cavalry to start coming around the back here. To start running down some of these units, just so the army gets wiped out as much as possible. Good, he got wounded. No experience for him. Last thing you want is for him to get on slack. Makes him a lot more dangerous. Got plenty of ammunition here, so I really don't mind shooting shattered units. The amount of ammo is not a problem. Alright, since one of these Death Hags is a, um, actually recruited Death Hag, it probably would be best if we didn't get it killed. But I don't know which one it is. Alright, maybe... Some fireballs would be best now. Next attack's coming from over here, so let's sort that appropriately. Here it comes. Fine, as long as it's attacking the garrison units, not a problem at all. Good. Maybe a bit of friendly fire there, but still got to get rid of the Ripper Dactyls. Good. Not done yet. Okay. Send someone over there to run them down. Alright. We really need to be focusing on the Coatles. Good. And there's the army losses. Make sure it dies. Sorry about the garrison if it gets a bit damaged. Come on, come on, kill the quaddle. Dark shards, without question. I don't know if I'm gonna get that one. I think that one's gonna get away. Uh, these two, come over here. Run these two down. I don't think I'm going to get to that one in time. Alright, this one here to stop shooting. Uh, all of these units here are essentially dead. Uh, that one's not. Yeah, we're not going to catch up with that in time. Well, a few of the units got away, but our main army didn't take any damage. Apart from the Death Hag. Now, we're still not done yet with the situation, because Mazda Mundi, well, Hexawaddle have still got a fair bit of force. They might make the attack with the other army. They might not. I'm not sure what they're going to do. Yeah, 
I'll go with this because it'll the negative um, casualty replenishment will only affect the lord that we just recruited. That looks like the right of primeval glory army. Okay. We damaged them so much and didn't take enough damage for them to warrant sending the other army in. But that's really what it's all about, trying to win your battles well. I mean, we might have been able to win the battle in the original situation as it was set up, but we would have taken so much damage that it wouldn't have been worth it. I couldn't have seen really any way to just not get totally wrecked, just because we were up against overwhelming force. But now, our army is just not damaged at all, so... Supreme Sorceress of Grant. Okay, so if we could maybe give this one here some Regiment of Renown, we might be able to finish this off. The, the Coatle's a little bit of a problem, but they can't heal it. So that's something. Uh, how fast is the Coatle? 96 speed. Okay, 116 speed. So... In theory, this one here should be able to beat it on its own. It's got a lot of health, though, and these guys here tend not to have much ammo. Then there's this one here, the Ravages of Rakarth. This, this is also a good anti-large unit. I think we get these two. And this should be what sufficient for beating them. I'm not sure if it'll say auto resolve or win. Okay, yeah, well. I will destroy them. Cool. Get rid of them. Seeking entertainment. Who seeks me? And she can no come over here and still reinforce. Me. Okay, we got one level up from that. Um, grab this. Uh, no, actually, no. Get extra movement range. Sorceress of the Dark Convent. And now we got to beat that army there. Traitors do not last long. So what happened over here? Lord of Nagaroth. Mm. Well, the thing to note about this is that you can use the gate bug to prevent most of those units from getting in. And you just need to deal with the three flying units. You know, when they do actually launch the attack. Pulling back. But yeah, that's um that's a bit yucky. Where is Marathi? Lustria, your end is nigh. Oh, okay, you might be able to get back there before um, they launch the attack. Right, just dealt with uh, dealing with the um, the uh, the heralds of Ariel. That's uh, that's a good job. Well done. Well, what the hell? Okay, ogres over there. Didn't feel like they were necessary. I don't blame you. I don't really think ogres are essential. Um, okay. Chosen of Hecate. Shaiish on you. Okay, so here's what I could do. I could force march this army over here and probably quite easily beat it. Or what you could do is move over to here, recruit some more forces. That way you can attack the fallen gates next turn. What can you recruit here? Yeah, if you got... Mm, you need more than three. What have they got in the fallen gates? I'd say get Manticores, if Manticores are actually good, but they're not. Scourge and our Chariots are good. Okay, two turns to recruit, though. Um, hmm, I don't know. Um, I guess playing it safe is always, always good. You should be able to come down here before they, um, reinforce each other. Get another army, because, uh... Supreme Sorceress of Grom. Most of their bounce of power is tied up over here. So... Bring that one over. Because, yeah, if I fight this, I'm just worried I'm going to take catastrophic damage. Just because it's a pretty basic army. Still says Valiant Defeat. But that's okay. With these ones in here, I can harass them a lot more. Especially with this unit here, which is a big concern.
But yeah, having two armies... Or having, like, one main army and, like, a really small army reinforcing it does give you a lot more tactical options or strategic options on the campaign map. Especially to do with zone of controls. Kind of a small map, which kind of favours them a bit. Okay, I think checkerboard formation is going to be needed here. Eager for battle. Cold blooded killers. Just gotta try and make it nice and neat and tidy. Dark shards. As best battle as I can. Ready. Okay. Cold blooded killers. Now. Just gotta be careful not to shoot our own troops, so sometimes it's better to do this formation. Dark elves! Bolt throwers! Dark shots! Okay. That way we've got a clear line of sight for them to shoot through. And if we put heroes here, then it really isn't gonna be a problem. Alright, let's do this. Alright, I need the heralds of the Raven Heralds to try to get the attention of the Coadal, just so it doesn't come over this way. It's a weird day when I prefer to use beast magic over fire magic, but... I've found that fire magic is just useless against them because high armor and um, loose formation. So yeah, the direct damage stuff tends to work better against these men. Okay, what I want to do, because we want to probably want to disband the Regiment of Renown later, is actually charge them through the enemy here, get their attention, draw them around the opposite direction. Yeah, see, that's a problem as well. I'm just going to have to... Oh, I know, I know, I know. Turn that around. Has to be dealt with. That's it. See how we got that one's attention? Okay. We'll get rid of the collateral. Okay, you get in there. Stop, thunder with you. See how we got a lot of units? Chasing backwards there. That's what we wanted to see. Come on. Get rid of the goddamn Coidal. Okay, now we need everyone getting rid of this one here. Lord's getting a bit beat up, but I think it'll be okay. Oh, this one's here a bit damaged. Okay, we got rid of the Coidal. Okay, bounce battle looks good, just a little bit concerned about some of the damage. Good, that one's gone. Try to protect the Death Hag. Good, she's getting away, that's good. Good, good, good. Stay back, stay back. Ooh, this wizard here needs to go, go, go. Oh, some close calls here. Yeah, you get in there, just hold, hold them back. And there's the army losses. Cool. Alright, some close calls with some of those units there, but their entire army gets wiped out. I'm glad I brought in this one here. Doing this, even though they didn't do much damage, um, distracting a few of their units was really helpful. Yeah, that damn cold one summoned absolutely wrecks your artillery. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it, apart from leaving a unit behind ready for it, and there's no guarantee they're even going to put it in the spot where you put them. A bloody victory!
I think we need to sack and occupy it. Because we want to get that replenishment, right? Search every and last corner. Slaves. Supreme sorceress of Grant. And then Attack reoccupy it. I don't want to loot and occupy because of course public order problems. Dark sorceress. Okay. Supreme now if you want to keep that army, you Grant. totally can. If not, you know, disband it. And you should be pretty much free, at least for the next few turns, to come down here. Uh, you won't be able to reach uh, Fallen Gates right away. You probably have to force march here. There shouldn't be anything in this area. Um, this over here, just use the gate bug as much as you can. The coattles and the ripodactyls will be a big problem. But if you just hold the walls, you might be okay. Then again, you've got Marathi coming down. But that situation there is dealt with. So they're goners. So this will be, yeah, down to tier 1. We just have to rebuild that. Uh, wait until you get to... Oh, you've already got to tier 5. That's pretty quick, actually. Um, well, 84 is not minus really quick. Oh, that's fine. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. So hopefully that taught you a little bit about Zone of Controls. I know it can be a bit confusing. Um, but yeah, just, just be careful when you're using two forces, whether it be a garrison or, or an army, um, to not have them necessarily be overlapping each other in zone of control, but having them stand next to each other. That way they can reinforce each other, and the enemy struggle to use their reinforcements to sort of pincer you in that way, which is what we try to prevent here. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.